We cooeed our best at dead of night, the dread it could not hear us. The children cry, O oh, mother dear, what keeps you from us? With weary, anxious eyes we search, over sand, ridge, scrub and bush, but the warm heart was cold in death of her who gave us birth. Suicide, shipwrecks, drownings, abduction, and murder. You might think all of these are buzzwords for a new hit thriller. Instead, these words make up the tragic tale of Busterhead Lighthouse, the first in Queensland. Often labelled the Lighthouse of Horror, its history of tragedy, the mystery, and sheer volumes of death has become fodder for ghost tours in the contemporary Instead of looking to supernatural forces to explain the macabre, we must explore more candidly Australia's dark and troubling past. We have a duty to bring to light the narratives of our past so that we can think about the ways in which we capture histories, from what and whose perspective, to ultimately learn about the people in these stories and the hardships and struggles endured. To pass off these tragedies as supernatural forces denies the realities endured. Queensland State Archives enable us to unravel these stories, to understand them more clearly, and to think about the human element. This podcast looks at the human cost of colonisation. We want to explore the daily lives of those on the literal edge of colonisation and the consequences of regional expansion. Now let's imagine for a moment. You've taken a job as a lighthouse keeper and are moving in with your family. You think, great, I'll be living in paradise with uninterrupted views of the ocean, the local town 20 kilometres down the road, just enough distance to feel removed from the hustle and bustle of people. What could be better than this? Thousands upon thousands of Instagrammable photos of sunshine and happiness, the envy of all your friends. Now imagine, the year is 1868, replace the smartphone in your hand with a fob watch and ubiquitous internet connection with a telegram. You want to have coffee with a friend? Sure, you'll have to write to them and wait for a response. Or perhaps you need to go food shopping, the nearest town is a day's walk away. At this point, you might think taking a job as a lighthouse keeper, having no running water, no electricity, and melting away in a tropical climate might not be the dream escape after all. Now imagine, you're a woman, dressed in Victorian clothing. You are nine months pregnant, and remember, the local town is a day's walk away. Feeling uncomfortable? Anxious? The saying as lonely as a lighthouse might be replaying over and over in your head, like a broken record, if records had been invented by then. In 1868, Queensland was an almost bankrupt colony, having split from New South Wales. Queensland was considered the Wild West, a place of cowboys and farmers doing it tough in the bush. Absent from these narratives are the female stories that are fundamental to the settlements we now call Australia. All you need to do is look to colonial painters painting pastoral Arcadias and First Nations ceremony they could not possibly have witnessed. Hidden from the picturesque are the individual stories and daily realities of colonialist expansion. Let us explore what stories are missing from these narratives to help understand the implications on the human psyche. The Busted Head Lighthouse is located 20 kilometres northwest of 1770 in North Queensland. But in 1868, when the lighthouse was first lit, it stood alone on the precipice, a beacon of light for the intrepid sailors seeking safe passage onto the land. The history of the lighthouse has been marred with death and mystery. The first incident was a construction worker who fell to his death, Yet the most perplexing and disturbing was the death of Kate Gibson. Kate was the wife of Neil, the lighthouse keeper, 
who disappeared in May 1887. History tells us that Kate lived with her husband and four daughters at the lighthouse. Yet more is known about her death than her life. The gruesome nature and sheer violence of her end meant it made the newspaper. The Telegraph, Monday 16th of May 1887. A mysterious occurrence is reported from Busted Head. On Friday night, the police at Rockhampton received a telegram from Sergeant Little, stationed at Gladstone, stating it has been reported that morning a Mrs Gibson has been lost since 9am of the previous day. A search party has been out until 8pm but without success, and a schooner's crew was going out that day. On Saturday night, the 7th, a second telegram was received by Inspector Stewart, stating that the body of Mrs Gibson had been found dead by her eldest daughter. There was a bad injury to the throat, and all around the spot where the body was found, there was a large quantity of blood. The body has been taken to the deceased woman's home, and Constable Mackenzie has left for the place to make inquiries. Dr. Symes was also leaving to make a post-mortem examination of the body, and an inquiry would be held in a few days. Although her death was ultimately ruled a suicide, one can't help but consider all possibilities. Living as a woman without agency, trapped in by environment and duty, it must have been a tough and isolating existence. The brutal nature of her demise reflects an internal battle with mental health, perhaps exacerbated by the remoteness and destitution of daily life. Telegraph Wednesday, 25th of May, 1887. The facts elicited show that the deceased must have committed suicide in a most deliberate and determined manner. Not because she was on bad terms with any of her relatives, but rather on account of physical suffering. Often she was affected by sleeplessness and pains in her head, and to put an end to this misery she took a razor and one morning early walked half a mile away from home and there, in the midst of a dense scrub, cut a gash in her throat that ultimately resulted in death. Her determination is shown by the fact that the cut extended from the right ear to within a couple of inches of the left, and severed the windpipe, the integument, and structures underneath, and the external carotid artery and all neighboring tissues. The body was found by her daughter, lying on the right side, with the right hand extended and the left partially folded over the breast. All the witnesses spoke of the kindly relations existing between the deceased, her husband, and her family, indeed with all with whom she had any intercourse. Tragically, only two years after the death of Kate, Mary, her 20-year-old daughter, died. Mary set out by boat with her father and assistant lighthouse keeper, John Wilkinson, his wife Elizabeth and a repairman, Alfred Powers. In stormy conditions, the boat capsized. Only Neil and John survived. In the inquiry into their deaths, Neil wrote a heart-wrenching account of the deceased's final moments. All the time we were 500 yards from the shore, my daughter and I believed the others hung onto my jumper and dragged me under. They let me go under the water. I could not reach the boat as the sea and wind were against me, but struck out for the shore as the tide was in my favour. When I started to swim for the shore, they had disappeared. When I got to the shore, I was in a very exhausted condition. I saw Wilkinson on the bottom of the boat, which was drifting in my direction and it was over an hour before he reached me. I tried to go out to his assistance, but was too exhausted. When he got within walking distance of the shore, I saw he had hold of a woman, his wife. I assisted in carrying her to shore. We tried our utmost to restore her, but to no avail. I went looking for the others. When I heard Wilkinson say, look out, there's something there, pointing in a certain direction. I went to the place indicated and found Power's body lying on a sandbank, quite stiff. I left Power's body where it was and then went to look for my daughter, but did not find her. Busted Head Lighthouse stands today as a monument to the past. It helped captains traverse reefs, to so steer clear of the rocky cliffs. But for those on the land, the lighthouse represents a constant daily struggle. Quarrelling the elements, the experience of the people that provided safe passage onto land was one of hardship. 
Even the act of leaving the lighthouse on a routine trip could be a matter of life and death. It is important in the contemporary to recognise this adversity, including the physical and internal battles endured. It is perhaps easier to diminish the human costs of colonisation by claiming curses or the powers of the supernatural. But what remains clear is that living on the periphery of society has devastating consequences. Rethinking and retelling these narratives makes us question our histories. Whose stories are we retelling and what perspectives are important to consider in doing this? The Queensland State Archives facilitates, in a sense, time travel, first-hand recorded stories of people and places the contemporary forgets. For more information on the content you've heard today, go online and visit Queensland State Archives. <laughs>